certainly want an expert because you're a movie and I yeah i grew up Peter with it absolutely absolutely is yeah um and so then i started to watch a bit during my audition process and i quickly decided that was not the way for oh, was me. that not helpful not at all to to only see tv shows or films from one very specific demographic is it's got old <laughs> and, and for us w there's absolutely no point being in a show that has a divide. NerdErotic.com It has been four years and 13 days since they announced Jodie Whittaker as the 13th Doctor, and today we have reached the end of the reign of the first female Doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker, who we will lovingly call Dr. Karen. But that's not all. Turns out Chris Chibnall will be joining her right after destroying a 50-plus-year-old beloved franchise beyond repair. Jodie Whittaker leaving Doctor Who alongside showrunner Chris Chibnall, the first female Time Lord, is leaving the cult show with an epic blockbuster special after three seasons in The Retardus. Don't let the TARDIS doors hit you on the ass on the way out. Goodbye and good riddance. I'm not going to tell the Doctor Who fans not to celebrate. You get so little to celebrate these days. Go ahead and enjoy this. It's not going to last very long because I know most of you know things are not going to get better. From The Hollywood Reporter, Whitaker, who joined the series in 2017, becoming the 13th Doctor and the first woman to play the BBC's iconic Time Lord, is leaving the cult show alongside showrunner Chris Chibnall after three seasons. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Because the news doesn't get much better. More on that in a minute. The duo are set to exit the retardus in a trio of Doctor Who specials, which will culminate in what the BBC is describing as an epic failure of biblical proportions. I'm sorry, no, epic blockbuster special, which will air in autumn of 2022 as part of the broadcaster's centenary celebrations. Now, I did drop a video last year stating that the first female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker would be leaving alongside Chris Chibnall after a possible split season, and it turns out that was mostly right. Prior to that, I made a video passing on some information that I heard from an insider who I've known and done business with for over 15 years, stating that William Hartnell would no longer be the first doctor. The first doctor would indeed be this cute little girl that they threw off a cliff, which was unfortunately accurate symbolism because the show fell off a cliff. I'm not going to sit here and say I told you so because I didn't. I simply passed on information that I heard from a friend and it ended up being correct and so what the show is completely broken i wish i was wrong about all of this i wish the bbc didn't feel the need to take away a positive male role model and replace him with a preachy karen doing a bad david Tennant slash matt smith impression in 2017 i opened my glorious gift box of size 13 shoes you have a size 13 foot Ugh. i could not have guessed the brilliant adventures, worlds, and wonders I was to see with them, said the first female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker, who we will lovingly call Dr. Karen, who was widely praised for her multi-layered, warm, funny, and inspiring depiction of the doctor. You gotta be f***ing kidding. Whitaker continues, my heart is so full of love for this show. I seem to recall you not wanting to prepare for the role, for the team who make it, for the fans who watch it, except for all of those fans who practice the male gaze and for what it has brought to my life. And I cannot thank Chris enough for entrusting me to completely destroy this role. I'm sorry, with his incredible stories. <laughs> We knew that we wanted to ride the wave and destroy this show side by side and pass on the baton together after it's in pieces. So here we are, weeks away from rapping on the best job I have ever had. I will agree with you there. That's the best job you will ever have. I don't think I'll ever be able to express what the role has given to me. And what did it give her? A platform. I will carry the doctor and the lessons I have learned forever. I hope you will. Lessons like 
preparing for a role or not alienating a fan base before you take that role. It was Chris Chibnall who lazily cast Whitaker just because he worked with her on Broadchurch when he took over from Stephen Moffat as showrunner. He also brought in co-stars Tosin Cole, Ryan, Mandeep Gill, Yaz, you know, the companion who loves to sit there and does it very well, and Bradley Walsh, Graham, the best thing in this show who they did dirty, and cast the acclaimed Sasha Dewan as the latest incarnation of the Master, plus Joe Martin as the mysterious fugitive doctor. Oh, the first female doctor of color played by Joe Martin, whose storyline was shoehorned in last minute to, I don't know, possibly stave off any criticism with going back to a male doctor, which is something else I heard from my friend, which I have mentioned in previous live streams, and that may or may not happen, or hell, they could just stick with the first female doctor of color played by Joe Martin, as far as I know. Jody and I made a three series and out packed with each other at the start of this once-in-a-lifetime blast. So now our shift is done, and we're handing back the TARDIS keys, said Chibnall, who is exiting alongside executive producer Matt Stevens. And the only hope this show has of turning around is if the entire BBC goes with them. Hashtag defund the BBC. The first female doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker, who we will lovingly call Dr. Karen's magnificent, iconic doctor, has exceeded all our high expectations, so you did set out to destroy destroy the show because you had to try to make it this bad. I'm not going to read the rest of this article because these people are high on their own farts and they've turned Doctor Who into a fart in the wind. This has been an abysmal failure, but the BBC has only just begun and I hate to break this to anyone who actually believes that they're going to walk back the timeless children or just forget about it. I remind you that this was all part of the plan from the beginning, and it wasn't just to cement the horrific legacy of the first female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker, who we will lovingly call Dr. Karen, it was to make the past more diverse. That's right, I know He-Man fans are feeling it right now, but they deliberately went into the past, gave the doctor an origin that no one asked for, and made William Hartnell a little black girl, and then pushed her off a cliff. She regenerated, and then the stunning woman of science known as Tech Taeun went and murdered the doctor over and over again. I put this up on Twitter the other day, the list of murdered franchises in order of severity, and Doctor Who is a clear number one. No one even questioned it. Now, the MCU will end up on this list. That's a work in progress. When it comes to sacrificing on the altar of agenda, Doctor Who remains the prime example. we got to give the BBC some credit. They worked really hard to make the show for everyone the show for absolutely no one. Again, with the rumors, that was just me passing on information. I'm not going to say I was right. I'm not going to say I told you so. But I will say I told you so specifically to the BBC on this. I told you the female doctor wouldn't work because the doctor is an established male character. And I have all the proof I need. Cratering ratings, horrible Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic scores. And it's only going to get worse. And it is fitting that it will be the 13th Doctor's 13th season. Now, most of you have probably already forgotten by now. But a couple of days ago, there was a Doctor Who panel at Comic-Con at home. And they released a trailer which showed rainbows and only one passing mention of the timeless children. I was dumb enough to think they brought John Bishop in to win back some of the male audience, but no, he's an idiot. More rainbows. And then, of course, there's Grey Worm from Game of Thrones, who, as appropriately named, discount Killmonger. And rainbows. Over the course of a 40-minute panel, they managed to tell us next to nothing. But what we did learn was this season is going to be one story. Meaning, if they don't hook people on that first episode, the ratings are going to crater. And I can promise you that's going to happen. And that's the only hope we have that this show fails so spectacularly it forces them to cancel the show some might argue that that's already happened and i would agree with you but not enough for the bbc remember piers wenger said editorially this show is spot on but what the bbc is finding out is editorially doesn't pay the bills by all means celebrate you have had so little to enjoy over the last few years doctor who fans you've earned this jody and chibi are gone unfortunately we are sitting here four years later just where i thought we'd be standing or sitting amidst the ashes of our favorite show doctor who 
posers are long gone off to go destroy something else and we're left to pick up the pieces and the only thing we have left is laughter and there will be plenty of it we can laugh our asses off at the inevitable failure series 13 will be if you like what you heard please like share and subscribe if you didn't like what you heard i thank you for listening this long jody bots i'll see you in the next video then when it came out and then you know people and the fans and we potentially from the figures got new fans i realized oh i could have set us back nerdrotic.com please subscribe